I love how the dominators are just twisted on the top of the sheet metal intake. Just to move the Venturi right over the air column in the intake port. Man, sometimes I feel like I'm just dreaming. I can't even believe that I have these kinds of parts. I guess I'm all grown up now. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin Griffiths. This is Griffiths Garage. I'm on a quest to build an eight second all motor street car. That's what we're gonna do here. You may be wondering where I've been. And that's a fair question. We've had some crazy family situations come up in the last, I don't know, six to eight months. And it's been pretty devastating on everybody in our family. We've, um, we lost my mom, we lost my dad, we lost my wife's grandma and my wife's grandpa. It's been, it's been tough. So we've focused on that lately and um, kind of put all this car stuff aside, but we've gotten things taken care of and um, we're ready to get some stuff done in the garage again. We've been spending the summer mountain biking, traveling around in our van, paddle boarding, things like that. Just spending quality time. Uh, processing all the loss and stuff that we've gone through in the last six months. Um, but now we're ready to get back to work. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Here we are at the Icon Forged Pistons drawing board. See if we can make sense out of this unshrouding of the valves. This is going to be the deck surface. This will be the bore diameter, which on the aluminum block, it's four and a half inches. This is that big B1 cylinder head. Thing's long. All right, so here's the thing. Originally, I finished these combustion chambers out to 4.375 bore diameter for the iron block that the heads were going to go on previously. But then when I got the four and a half inch bore block, it created a little bit of a problem. Because now the block's four and a half inches. So that creates this little step in the combustion chamber. We go from 4375 out to 4500. And this would represent the way that the combustion chamber is now. This would be the valve job or the valve intake side. This would be the exhaust side. Intake. Exhaust. Penmanship. <laughs> valve stem on the intake side. Valve stem on the exhaust side. So you open the intake valve, about like that, three quarters of an inch. You can immediately see when you open that valve how it gets close to the side of the combustion chamber. Now prior, I had the combustion chamber pulled out as far as I could pull it out to the 43750 bore. What we want to do now is take advantage of the bigger bore diameter. This is the intake port window for the inlet side on the intake. Big, tall, raised intake port. Here's the air 
column dropping down on the valve job, making its way around the valve job, and then right there is where you see the problem. The pinch. Obviously, you got airflow on this side as well. 360 degrees around that valve to be exact. But right here, what we want to do is clean this area out. I want to pull this wall out to 4.5 bore diameter. Right there. And you can immediately see where it just unshrouded the valve and the valve job. And so now you get additional airflow through those areas. So that's the intake side. Here's what happens on the exhaust. It's kind of a different story. Here you got that step, just like you had on the intake side, but the flow goes in the opposite direction on the exhaust. So what ends up happening is the exhaust flow trips right, right there on that ledge. Here's the exhaust port, raised. So you get good exhaust flow, obviously, on this side of the valve. But on this side, right there, that trip. So we're going to pull this wall out to 4 or 500. A little fancy erasing right here. And you can immediately see how you're going to have additional airflow on the shrouded side of the valve. Symmetry from a blueprinting standpoint. This is what we're talking about. And this is something that you can do on nearly all engines. Very rarely does your combustion chamber, ported or not, match your bore diameter. What we're going to do here is put the head on the block backscribe all the combustion chambers so that way we can make sure that these combustion chambers fit this block perfectly. So all we're going to do is just take a little bit of lacquer thinner, come back, clean it all off, comes off nice and easy. Sometimes I can't believe I'm actually getting to build this engine. Like I've been dreaming about this for so long. I just want to fire it up, put some heat in it. Back it out into the driveway. Take it downtown. All I need to do to stay motivated is just think about what it's gonna sound like. How it's gonna cackle. And it's gonna cackle. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna sound pretty dang good. I bought a little shout out to my buddy Ray Myers on uh, Instagram. He's out there doing this stuff for real. I play around with it. He's the real deal. He's out there porting every day, making horsepower. Ray, if you're watching, you got to get that Hemi going, man. I want to see your, your Barracuda running again. That's an impressive little car. So I just like to use the, this Dicom, the steel blue layout die. I like to use it for the aluminum. I tend to use the red stuff on cast iron. But as you can see, I had both colors on here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the dye in the area that I'm most concerned about, just around the valve.
All right, we're gonna let these dry and then we'll put them on the engine, roll it upside down and uh, scribe them out. Just a couple of nuts on here, just to hold the head in place. You know, I think it's probably, it's probably always a good time to remind people, people that are watching this project unfold. A lot of people will probably be wondering, you know, why would you do it this way? Or why would you choose this part or that part? And um, I definitely don't want to give any illusion that I know everything, because I certainly don't. I'm just a guy that's been following this stuff for a long time as a hobby. And I like to think about this stuff in my spare time a lot. We're about to find out what the, the volume is of the combustion chamber. What we're going to find out is that because it's so small for the given cubic inch size, it's going to have a ton of compression. This thing will make probably 16 to 1, over 16 to 1 compression if we put a zero deck flat top in it. And that would be fun in maybe a NA class or something like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to roll the block over and just backscribe the combustion chamber. It's only going to be a, a couple of cc's. It's not going to be that much. I'm going to scribe. Let me get my old man readers. All right, so all I'm going to do is I've got my scribe. I'm going to look down in the combustion chamber and I'm going to see how the unfortunately finished combustion chamber, how it uh, hangs over the edge of the cylinder wall. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. This is, if you're ever building an engine, this is probably one of the most important things that you can look at that nobody ever pays attention to. You put the finished combustion chamber on the cylinder it's gonna go on and you see how it fits. But you can see the step, the blue line, the blue diken represents the, the misalignment. So what we're looking at is we're looking at that trip right there, right? Especially on the exhaust. You open that exhaust valve and then if you run that ridge around the left side like that, I wish I could light it up and point with my scribe. Um, that's, that trips the, air, the exhaust column going through the the valve seat around the valve job. You can't have that. You can't have that chip right there. That's just basic engine blueprinting. On the intake side, that whole right side shrouded by the side of the cylinder wall. The air column's trying to come around the valve job on that side, and we need to make sure that the side of the combustion chamber is not in the way. That's as far as I could pull it back when it, when it was on the 440 block, but now on this block, I can pull it back the rest of the way. So I'm just going to scribe the, the blue on each cylinder. I'll pull the head off and then you can see what it looks like. The only reason why I ever wanted to build a 588 is because everybody has 572s. And I'm like, well, I'll just take a four and a half inch crank that you would normally use in a 572, and I'll just have it offset ground out to four and five eighths, build 588. All right, let's see what that looks like. What we're talking about so we're just going to take this it's probably you can see that it's weird to see the core shift even between the two blocks like this head was ported to the factory block 
and then you can see the difference in the step from there to there right there it's the same in the middle right there it's about the same for whatever reason right there and I can see my old scribe mark too it's right there it's crazy I'm just gonna go at it slow you guys can follow along all I'm gonna do is uh, sneak up to that line real quick little combustion chamber for a 580-inch motor. <laughs> oh. That's good. So yeah, it was just CC brat. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of Vaseline and I'm gonna put it around the valve jaw so that way we don't leak uh, mineral spirits onto our porting bench. It'll seal that off. Come around the intake valve, same thing. Just a little bit of Next thing I know, or next thing we're going to do is just smear Vaseline around the head gasket area so we can seal the plate to the head just like that. I just, I got an old piece of plexiglass. The sink's probably CC'd a million heads. I'm just going to put it at the highest point. I'm going to push this down just to seal everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and zero the barrette. I wonder who's texting me. I bet it's Daniel wanting to know what the volume of this chamber is. <laughs> Daniel, I'm trying. All right, what plug do we run in a B1 Dodge? This, um, 3923. You guys still paying attention? Am I boring you to death yet? Alright, let me get a little bit of Vaseline around the threads of the spark plug. Get it inserted. If I could complain about one thing, I mean, I complain about things on these heads all the time as far as like how they're designed and how we miss the curve because if this head was designed today, it would look a little different. Um, but we got to live with what we got, which what we got is pretty dang good for big block Mopar. 
but it's not perfect. One thing I would do is um, the spark plug registers. In fact, I might do this in the future on this head. Is I might um, adjust the spark plug location by milling a, the register a little bit deeper. that how many cc's is a fully ported zero milling you know I haven't milled this head at all obviously there's all kinds of options for milling on these things here we go drum roll please man how fun would it be to run this thing at 16 to 1 I could not even imagine if I was going to do that uh, west coast in a racing which a buddy of mine does bob whited oh man i'd leave all the compression in it here we go right there we have 71 71 cc's there you have it folks Take a picture of this, shoot it over to Daniel. There it is. I think it's one of the toughest things to do when you when you got a motor like this that <clears throat> can run as high as 16, just over 16 to one compression with a flat top piston. It seems almost criminal to take any of that compression out of the engine. But then when you start thinking about the fuel that you're going to be running and how expensive it is going to be driving the car around, you just go the other way. So I think it's just the, the typical streetcar recipe where you back the compression down to the edge. When you put race gas in it, you can throw some nitrous in it or something like that or lean on it really hard. Alright everybody, that's another video. I hope you got something out of it. I know I did. I enjoy the process. I really enjoy sharing this stuff with everybody. Like I said, I'm not a know-it-all. Just trial and error over the years. This kind of technology came from reading articles like back in the Smoky Eunuch days. He used to write these columns in Circle Track Magazine and I would just I, I was a drag racer, but I had a subscription to Circle Track Magazine just so I can read Smokey Unit. I, I just found that fascinating. You just pick these things up over the years. You hear somebody talk about it, or you read an article, and uh, or you see a dyno test or something like that, and it just becomes something that you do. These operations take a lot of time. They don't cost any money. I'm not out of anything except for a few materials, but you can be guaranteed that on a dyno, it's the difference between between making 900 horsepower, 950 horsepower, whatever. The bigger the engine, the bigger percentage gain. I, I guess I got more time than money, so might as well do this kind of stuff. We're waiting for the pistons to get made. They're going to be here shortly. Things are really rolling, and I'm really getting excited. After we do that, crank and the block back from the machine shop, and we'll start putting this thing together. Anyhow, if you could comment down below. I always leave things out. Sometimes it's fun to talk about those things. I don't intentionally leave them out. I just, 
I never know what everybody wants to see. And this is an extremely long video, so I'm dealing with that too. Anyhow, all right, I'll catch you guys later.